Okay, so this is problem 7.1 out of Griffiths. I'm going to try to go through a lot of uh, chapter 7 problems right now because I have an exam in about two weeks in my ENM 2 class. Uh, so I'm going to try to go through and start doing these and hopefully uh, this will help me get better and at the same time help anyone that has questions. So it says two concentric metal spherical shells of radius A and B respectively are separated by a weakly conducting uh, material of conductivity sigma. So part A asks, if they are maintained at a potential difference V, what current flows from one to the other? So current is equal to the integral of J dot dA. And J is the current density, so J is current per area. So we're integrating that with respect to area. And another equation to know is that vector j equals sigma times vector, vector e, the e field. Um, so we can substitute that and we get that the current is equal to sigma the integral of e dot dA. Now this should look really familiar because it's the integral form of Gauss's law. Okay, and we know that, let me make this a little bit better here. The integral of E dot dA is equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught. So the enclosed charge, I'm going to just call uh, Q here little q. And this is equal to just q over epsilon naught. Then we can say our current i is equal to sigma q divided by epsilon naught. Okay? But we can go further with this and continue onwards. So on the idea of e-field, and we're doing this because it mentioned potential, and the way that we should get potential is finding the E-field because we have symmetry here. We have spherical symmetry. If you have spherical symmetry, uh, it's a good idea to find the E-field using Gauss's law. So let's find the E-field real quick. We already kind of started it. The integral of E dot dA we said was just little q over epsilon naught. And that's going to be equal to the magnitude of our E field times 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius of our Gaussian surface. So then the E field is just going to be equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 over r squared, and we'll give it the r hat direction. Okay, so we have the E field, and with the E field it's pretty easy to find the potential. Sorry, just getting water. So, the difference in potential, which they call it uh, sphere B and sphere A, so I'll just use that notation. The potential at, we'll call it RB, minus the potential at A, is equal to negative the integral from A to B. I'll actually just call this B minus A. Okay. So what is that equal to? That's going to be E dot DL, okay? I think I actually had these backwards here, okay? So we already know what the E field is, so just substituting that in, we just found it. Then our potential at B 
minus our potential at A, so our difference in the potential is going to be just Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then if we move that up, the negative is, goes away because that's R to the negative 2, add 1, that's negative 1. When we divide by that negative, the negative in front of Q goes away. And we're left with just 1 over RA minus 1 over RB. So, okay, now we have the potential, the difference in potential. And here we can solve for Q. That same Q that was in the other part, that's going to be V at B minus V at A times 4 pi epsilon naught. And then we're going to divide by 1 over R A minus 1 over R B. So now we have that Q that was in our current equation. If you remember right here, I'm just trying to box the important equations. We can substitute that Q into there. Uh, so then we get current is equal to sigma times I, or times Q, I'm sorry. So this is all just the Q part. And then just times, it was divided by epsilon naught in the equation. So we can see the epsilon naughts actually cancel here. And that's actually your current, given that our potential, oops, close that parentheses, and constants and knowns. Okay. So then if we go up to B, what is the resistance between the two shells? So the resistance, we can actually use Ohm's law. V equals IR. That was also Ohm's law up here. This is also Ohm's law. But this is the more familiar Ohm's law. And obviously R then the resistance is equal to the potential over the current. And we know what those two things are. This is our potential divided by 4 pi sigma v at b minus v at a times 1 over r a minus 1 over r b and you can see the potentials actually end up not mattering here so then you get r is equal to 1 over 4 pi sigma times 1 over Ra minus 1 over Rb. And then part C. Part C is uh, basically asking, um, determine the current between the two, two metal spheres, each one with radius A, if B is much greater than A. Or B is much greater than... Uh, yeah, if B is much greater than A. Well, then your R simplifies to just 1 over 4 pi sigma RA, but they said the radius is just A, so that's what I'm going to call it. Now, we have two of them now, and when we have resistors, we can just add them in series. So I guess you could call it R total. If you do that, you'll just get 1 over... 2 pi sigma a and if you wanted the current again ohm's law tells us that i is equal to the voltage over the resistance and we know what the resistance is so that ends up just being 2 pi sigma v times a and that's your new current i'm probably going to do a couple problems out of griffiths throughout this weekend just to help prepare for the exam and hopefully it helps some uh, other people as well. So hopefully